What's up friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today is a very exciting day because we are officially getting the garden started. I am starting some onions, we're starting some flowers. We've got begonias, begonias, begonias. I am so fired up, ready to plant some stuff. It's been a nice few months of winter break of just not really even thinking about gardens. Honestly, I didn't even wanna watch videos about them. I didn't read books, I didn't watch any podcasts, I did nothing garden related for like two solid months and that means that my dahlia tubers are sitting in bags still dirty and not stored properly in my hallway but I had a nice rest something that you will discover when you finally get a big enough garden this is how you know when you have a big enough garden um, the winter will start approaching especially if you're a person who didn't like the winter before um, the winter will start approaching and you will be overjoyed <laughs> You will have visions of not waking up and like watering your garden or picking bugs off of your herbs that you worked so hard to grow and just every bug in the entire fucking world decides to cling on to them. <sighs> I swear I love gardening. But something I've realized is that I have a big enough garden now because it absolutely wore me out last year. And that means that after a rest, I am very excited to get back started again. Back started again. Start back again. Am I... Mm. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I do my seed starting. It's going to be sort of like a 2022 version. I do this kind of every year, but my methods change a little bit every year. So I think that that's good. And I will show you what you can get started on really early in the year, because as I'm filming this right now, it's the end, you know, last like week or so of January. And um, I don't know why I said that weird, January. It's January, so usually a lot of times you're not really planting very much in zone six and seven where I am. So um, I'm going to show you what you actually can get started now if you have itchy sewing fingers like I do. I'm going to show you how I make soil blocks, which is an alternative to having to buy you know, anything to plant your seedlings in. Especially if you get creative, you can use recycling and stuff like that. I'll show you some winter sowing in milk jugs, which I have a full video on that I will stick here um, if you wanna get to that later on and have a more deep dive understanding of that. But I'm just gonna walk you through it quickly today. Of course, we're gonna start a few crops that you can get started nice and early because they take quite a while to get going. So let's get going. All right, so we're gonna get started on this little sowing seeds in trash process with some carnations. Um, I am using a little takeout container and some small plastic pots that I purchased last year that are actually pretty durable and I'm able to just wash those out and I expect to get at least another growing season out of those. So I'm just fitting those right into the little takeout container and I'm using regular potting soil with good drainage. Um, you know, there's a little bit of bark and chunks in there, not a big deal. Um, and then when I close this up, it's actually going to work out like a humidity dome. So just like those seed trays that you will purchase every year and end up, they break very easily and you'll throw them out. So I figure I might as well use something like this. So I've not grown carnations before, um, so this is gonna be my first year growing them. I already can tell you that I overseeded them, so go a little easy if you are doing this. Um, I had really good germination from my florette seeds, so that uh, worked out to be a bit of a tangled mess in a couple of weeks when these germinated. And I'm putting a couple extra holes in the top just for a little extra ventilation. So next up, we are doing some winter sewing. Now I have very detailed videos about this. I'm gonna attach them to the end screen of this video. So if after you're done with this one, you wanna check those out and learn more about this amazing process of germinating seeds, especially seeds that need a cold stratification. So that would be like your native perennials, um, a lot of uh, like lavender, there's quite a few seeds that require a period of cold and this is going to basically eliminate your need for grow lights and really paying any attention to these at all. So I'm just filling these containers, which I've cut, you know, into like a little hinged greenhouse. I've put holes in the bottom, holes in the top for some ventilation, and I'm filling them with regular potting mix, just whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna seed the seeds according to the directions and then you're gonna tape those lids shut and put them outside and you let nature do all of the work uh, you can see in the other videos. I don't wanna keep going on about it as we are moving on to the onions. 
So if you've never planted onions from seed before, there are a couple different kinds. There's actually three different kinds. I am using long day onions because that's what you need in the Northeast. If you're in the South, you're gonna look for short day onions. And there's also, um, in, I think they're called like intermediate or something that go kind of in the middle. So I'm planting three different kinds of short day onion, excuse me, long day onions um, here this, this planting session. So I think those are some Walla Wallas going into a takeout container that has drainage um, holes poked in the bottom and a little bit of extra ventilation in the top. And that has worked out really well for me for getting things like this started, where onions, you're just gonna be picking out the seedlings in a few weeks and transplanting them to their own container. So it doesn't really matter if I heavily seed these and they're all just in a blanket because I'm just gonna pull them out in a few weeks anyway. Moving on, I am cutting open a fresh bale of Pro Mix, which is a Coco Coir and peat mix. And I found this to be the best soil blocking soil that I have used so far. And I've also got some puffed mineral called vermiculite, which I'm gonna sprinkle over the top of my soil blocks to help lock in moisture at the top level. These are the little trays I'm gonna be using today, although you can use you know, any kind of tray, just lunch trays work great. And this is how I both kill some fungus gnat eggs and make sure that my hands do not have to be hurting in really cold soil. Uh, I highly recommend taking care of yourself in this small way, making sure that you wet your soil with nice warm water. Um, it feels a lot nicer. So this is a soil blocking tool. I got mine from Florette and I will link that down below um, if they have them in stock. I actually have a smaller one too, but this is the big, the bigger one. So what I'm doing here is I'm shoving it into my nice moistened soil, which was clumping together when I squeezed it in my fist. And I'm using my thumb to make sure that I pack it all into the nooks and crannies at the top, because at the top, you're gonna have this little dimple um, where you're gonna place your seed. So I'm making sure that the top is nice and compact. This is probably um, a slow and tedious way of doing this, but, um, <laughs> It is what it is. So don't get frustrated, like I'm about to, um, when your first seed blocks come out like this. This just means that they're not moist enough. You're gonna have to go back to your kettle water and mix in some more water until they are clumping a little better and not falling apart. Should be able to like toss it up in your hand a little bit and have it land back in your palm and not completely explode. You can see here that it's gonna work out a lot better this time and you'll be able to see the dimples in the top where you're gonna put your seed. I tend to fill those up with vermiculite when I'm planting smaller seeds because they're pretty big. Um, and that actually makes a nice little nest of moisture for your seed to germinate in. So once you get going with these, um, you can kind of cruise right along at a decent pace. And I really think that these are worth the trouble because you're cutting down on so much waste and so much cost. And the transplants are always beautiful because the roots will air prune and you're not having to deal with so much root bound mess when you go to transplant them. Now being the seasoned professional that I am, I of course deleted the footage of me actually planting the seeds in here, but here are the begonias that I planted um, a few weeks later than I should have because these really take forever. Honestly, by the time you see this video, if you're in zone six, uh, you may want to just go buy some starts because uh, at least with these varieties that I got um, from Swallowtail Seed Gardens, I believe, uh, these guys right here actually take quite a long time to get to flowering stage. So um, I'm going to up the fertilizer a bit this year and keep them on a nice heating mat because begonias need warmth at all times to get going. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, you should be able to see there is a tiny, tiny, tiny little seedling right there. These things are very, very, very small and they're very, very slow growers. But here you go. So here are the soil blocks. As you can see, a lot of the vermiculite has already kind of washed away because I have been irresponsibly top watering. I have stopped doing that this week. We're back to bottom watering like I should have been. But that vermiculite does help to keep that moisture in right near the seed where that delicate little root is gonna come out and you don't wanna risk uh, them drying out 
and killing off your seedlings. Here is the other seed that I started that day when I was making seed blocks, and those are two different kinds of celery, which is another thing that I have never managed to start on time as they need quite a long time to grow. And here you can see the shameful mess that is my carnations. <laughs> So um, perhaps you will see me unfuck this mess in a future video, but um, I have not gotten there yet, so. Quick onion update. We have quite a few that need to be transplanted over here and a bunch that have already been transplanted over here. So I basically just put those, you know, maybe three to four to a pot. And then as they get bigger, I'll transplant them out again. And lastly, I just wanted to show you another low cost option for your soil blocks. Um, you can use these trays. These actually come from the dollar store. They're like a hard plastic. So they're pretty sturdy. And I expect that these will last me at least a few seasons and soil blocks fit pretty well in them. And then you can just fill the tray with water to bottom water them and um, use like a turkey baster or something like that if you need to siphon any extra water out. So this is what I'm gonna be using for the seeds that I'm gonna be starting later today, which you will see in the next vlog. You know, it could be just the vague threat of being able to go outside and breathe the same indoor air as other human beings somewhat soon, but I am even more excited for spring than normal. I'm going to have a third year garden outside this year, which means I have been working in that land in some capacity for two years before this. So I'll have a lot of perennials coming in very strong this year. I planted a lot of bulbs over the fall. I have some videos that I'll try to remember to put here about that. And I have garlic coming in and I have, oh my gosh, so much stuff to start in the seed room. I'm gonna try not to go too overboard like I did last year. I don't need seven varieties of every vegetable, but I think you and I both know that I'm going to go a little overboard and I hope that you will come with me on that journey. So let me know what you guys are sowing down below. Um, if you don't have a garden and you want one and you are living vicariously through me, hang in there. I was you for a very long time. Okay, friends, I have filmed a bunch of videos today, so I am going to go lay down. Thank you for hanging out with me today and I will see you very soon in the next one.